praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Today is another beautiful day that the Lord has made. And I always say is that, as He said, let us come together and to rejoice in Him. It's a gift from God to you and I. For us to rejoice in this day. And as we've been doing, today too is another opportunity, first day, to meet and pray unto the Lord for His divine mercies in our life and also to help us to make heaven our goal. Amen and amen. Now, as we have been doing, last week we spoke much about whom do you align yourself with. And today we are continuing the same topic. And I know it will be a blessing to you. It will be a blessing to me. Invite your brothers and sisters, let them come and sit down for us to share the word of God first of all. Then we enter into a prayer time. God richly bless you so much. Amen and amen. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this beautiful day. A day that you have made for us to come together and to rejoice in you. We thank you for your divine intervention. Had it not been you on our side, what will I, what can we do? We will be nothing. We will not be able to do anything. But by your grace and your love, that is why we are still in the existence. We pray that you open the eye of our understanding. We pray that my Lord, yeah, you ex 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 show of your powers and your spirit upon our life. Let everyone know that Lord, you are the only true God in the universe that my Lord owes everything. We thank you, my Lord, for your spirit. We thank you for your love. We thank you, my Lord, for your presence in our midst this day. In the name of Jesus, thank you, Holy One of Israel. Let your name alone be glorified. Amen and amen. Yes, we thank God for this day, and I'm so much grateful to be your host pastor and to share the word of God with you. And as I said, we are continue. Whom do you align yourself or associate yourself with? With a subtitle, how do people describe you? How do people describe you as a Christian? Are you a strong Christian? How firm are you in the Lord? And how do you align yourself with God? Whose name is Yahweh? Many people profess to love God, but their heart is far away from Him. We go to church all right and we do things seeming as seem. We are very close to Him. But our heart is far away from Him. What is much more important is as you profess Him as your Lord and personal Savior in life, let Him be your priority. Let Him matter most in your life. We take life into our own hands and do our own things by ignoring Him. Until a problem occurred, before we recognize that there is someone called God and His Son Jesus, so we cry, Jesus, help me. But when the problem is over, Jesus goes to sleep, God also goes to rest. And it's my prayer that this time, as you're listening to the word of God, you will not let Jesus rest or sleep. And God will also rest. And the Holy Spirit must be inactive in your life. And I tell you, you'll be more than a conqueror in the name of Jesus. This day I am speaking with you about a certain young guy. He is a little boy. 
that many people underestimate, even his family members underestimate him. The king underestimate him. The grown up men in that country, they all despised him that he is a little boy. But I want you to know that the little things that people despise, God takes it and uses it to glorify himself. So do not underestimate anything that God allows to come your way. Amen and amen. Now let's study something brief from the book of 1 Samuel chapter 18 verse 6 and 7. 7. We know this story very well. It's a popular story that we speak much about it. But I want you to know that with God all things are possible and God does not look to how tall and how great. He's no respecter of men. Provided you are ready to surrender unto him, he will use you for his own glory. Hallelujah. And this story is about this young little boy called David and Goliath. As we have been hearing this story all the time. And I'm, I'm not going to start from the beginning. But I will tell you the brief about him, the story about him. Then we take the main point and know what to do next. Beloved one, hear the word of God from the book of First Samuel, chapter 18, verse 6 and 7. And it came to pass as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistine that the women came out of all cities of Israel singing and dancing in meeting King to meet King David with tabrets with joy and with instruments of music and the women answered one another as they played and said Saul have slain his thousands, thousands, and David has ten thousands. Amen. David has slain his thousand, and David his ten thousands. Amen. How do people describe you? These two people that we are talking about. That is, King David, he wasn't then a king. He was a little boy. Saul was the king. He has been ruling in the land of Israel. Now, the Bible made me to understand that Samuel deviated from the things of God. Some, Saul, Saul deviated from the things of God. Saul do a lot of things that upset God. So this made God to deny Saul from, from his kingship. Now, it came to pass that David was a little boy keeping frogs of his father. And the Philistines came on attack against the Israelites them and this man called Goliath he is a giant man a great man and anytime he leads the Philist Phil Philistines to war they come out victorious nobody can stand him he conquers every nation, every city, and they feared him. So this man came out to despise the God of Israel and the armies of Israel. What happened for this little boy to get there? During the period of war that the father asked him to send some food, to his senior brothers who 
are companions of Saul. They accompanied him to war against the Philistines. So David took the food, set off, and met his brothers, gave them the food, and gave some food also to the captains. And he heard the voice of Goliath speaking, blaspheming against the God of heaven and the God of Israel. And the and the captains and the armies of Israel. So, David took angry. He was so mad against this Philistine. So he inquired what will happen to the person who will be able to slaughter this he goats. This demon, that evil forces that has been assigned against the Israelites to defy them, what will be done to this person? He said the king has already made provision that whosoever will be able to take down this man, kill this man, the king is ever ready to pack some gift to such a person and even to the stand of David, his daughter, for marriage. So David decided that he will, he will meet this guy and kill him. So he prayed to his God. David went to see the king, Saul, and told him, that he is ever ready. But hear what? The king said to him, You are a little boy. And this guy has been fighting from time immemorial. He's a great man with tactics. He's a tactician. So there is nothing you can do to defeat him. He said, No, don't say this. Because as a little boy, as my father sent me out to keep my Flops. When the lion come, I kill them barehandedly. Nothing in my hands, just my slink. With my hands, I kill them. The wolves come, I tear them in pieces, and I take my sheep out of their mouth. So this man is nothing before me. God will give him to me to slaughter him. The king persuaded, but David said, no, just give me this chance to prove to you, my God, the God that I have, the God of Israel is not asleep. Beloved one, when you read the Bible, you will know and you will see that all the Israelites, the armies of Israel, they were afraid, shivering, Everybody was running out of the sight of this Goliath. Nobody was ever ready to stand. Even the brothers, the senior brothers of David were so much ferocious against him because they know he is proud and is very stubborn. But one thing, David recognized who he is. He knew the God that he served, that he never failed. This God has been with him as a mighty and a terrible God to the wild beast, wild animals in the forest. How come a mere mortal human being, he can stand, he can, with God, all things are possible. So David said, there is nothing too hard for God to do. He will give this guy to me. The king decided to give him his garment of war. David did put on, but at the end of the day, he realized that that would not help him. Okay? So he took it off and told the king, Hold your peace. I will go and face this guy and bring his head to you. So the king gave him the permission. And he left to the field. 
when Goliath saw him, he screamed and started abusing the Israelites and cursed them with the God of the Philistines, the gods of the Philistines, thinking that this is a little boy. It is seconds he will finish him. But this little boy did not underestimate his God. He took little stones, five little stones with him. And as he met this Goliath, he took out of that five little stones, one little stone put into his sling, rolled it, and with the help of the Holy Spirit, listen to what he said, you come with, uh, to me with your sword and spear and so many things, but I come to you in the name of the God of Israel, the God of Abraham, God of Isaac, whom you defy, and today he will give you to me, for me to slaughter you, to kill you. This guy was very bold to stand before the Goliath. And really, as he professed God to be great in him, God gave him the spirit. God gave him the power. God gave him the authority over Goliath. So David, as he rolled his sling, the stone went straight to the forehead of Goliath. And I foresee the Holy Spirit backing the stone to hit the forehead. And Goliath couldn't move an inch, but rather knelt, knelt down and fell on his face. And the whole field was a great roar. Everybody started shouting, wondering what was happening. David had nothing, no sword, no knife, no matchet in his hands. So he has to run quickly and stood on him, pull out his sword, that is Goliath's sword, and use the sword of Goliath to slaughter him, take off his head, and lift it up. And when the Philistines saw what has happened, they have to flee from the Israelites. Beloved one, what are people saying about you? They say you are a very little boy. There is nothing you can do. They say you have no power or authority. So you can't do anything. You discuss issues with people. And they try to discourage you from moving ahead in life. From making your life meaningful. When you yield to whatever discouragement that they give to you, you will not be able to move ahead. But when you listen to the voice of God, and you are very close to God, and you fear God, and you love God, and you pray to God, you commune with God all the time, I tell you, there is an uncompromisable favor that God gives to you. Highly favored. David was highly favored. How many of us are highly favored? If we are highly favored, you will do the impossibility. When you are highly favored, you will not be afraid of anything. And nothing can discourage you. No one can discourage you. No amount of words or nothing that will stand before you will put fear in your heart. 
Because he that is in you is greater than he that is in the world. David said, I can do this because he knew that he that dwells in him is greater than he that is on the field. He knew that Jesus is his help. He knows that the Holy Spirit is his help. Whom do you align yourself with? What is your faith? How do you place God before you? You pretend to be, but when a problem arises, you run away, you bow down, you succumb to whatever thing they tell you. So you follow the thing of this world. Beloved one, you have not aligned yourself with God yet. It can be that you are a pastor. It can be that you are a prophet. Or you are a minister. You are a prayer warrior. A great elder in the church. But when the problem comes, who is able to stand to overcome that problem? To let the kingdom of God reign. David did not allow what people said. His family members, the army officers, the commanders, and all the military men, what they said. He did not allow those things to discourage him. But rather, he dwelt on God, trusted in God, had faith in God. Believed in God that David Goliath is nothing before him. God would give him to him to, to him, he, he, he David, and he will be able to slaughter him. He will be able to destroy Goliath. He, Goliath is nothing before him. It is very simple to take Goliath down. So David dwell on God. Now listen to me, beloved one. David had a pure heart in the sight of the Lord. David was humble in the sight of the Lord. David feared God. These three things were working powerfully in David. So this gave him that cordial relationship with God. Even in the field, whilst he was watching over the sheep, he was under serious training by God. God was training him for a purpose to defeat his enemy. What is the problem that you are going through? There are some things that will go through. People reject you in life. And you go to a situation that is unbearable. But you count it to be so bitter in your life. And you keep it in you. So it gives the devil the chance to defeat you. David did not allow whatever went on to become a part and parcel of him. He put it aside. David looked towards God. He looked at God. And he listened to God. And he obeyed God. So God was with him. And God helped him to stand on his grounds. To overcome his enemy. What about you, beloved one? If you are able to stay close to God and to humble yourself before God and have daily communion with God, that is building a great relationship. God will lift you on higher ground by bestowing upon you uncommon favor, highly favor. And you begin to do the undo. Things that people cannot do. What people find it difficult to approach. You'll be able to approach it. 
and do it for the glory of God without fear, not trembling. Beloved one, you have a greater God, the creator of the universe, who knows what is good for you. David realized that it is possible. He can do it with God. He can do it. If you will get to know this day that it is possible, you can overcome whatever situation that you go through in your life. Yes, it will be possible for you. But if you don't believe yourself and you don't believe your God, there is nothing you can do to achieve your aim in this life. I encourage you, beloved one, that humble yourself before God and fear God and love God. And when you have a pure heart, you'll be able to excel in this life. Let me give you another example like Mary, the mother of Jesus. She feared God. She had a pure heart. And she prayed to God, very close to God. She also had highly favored by God. That is why our Savior, Jesus Christ, was able to come through her. And they ascribed her as a woman highly favored by God. The people ascribed to David that he has killed 10,000 highly favored by God. Saul has been a chief and a king for so many years. They never sang a song that is as great as that of David. Who wasn't a king? So, when he becomes a king, what do you think will happen? He had the favor. After killing Goliath, he had the favor. So he walked in the presence of God. And he walks to and fro in the sight of the men. The great men. The so-called titled men. David was literal. But he had favor. They respect him a lot. How do people describe you? Beloved one, when you align yourself with God, you'll be highly favored by God because he is a righteous God. And he seeks for people that fear him, that respect him, people that humble themselves before him and have a pure heart so that he can use them. The things that have been abandoned, that people don't respect, wherever you are, if you can go on your knees and begin to pray to God, that you have been abandoned by your family members, you have been abandoned by your husband, you have been abandoned by your wife, you have been abandoned by your children, your parents have abandoned you, nobody respects your life, but you know that you have a God who is capable of doing all things without taking sides with anyone or as expecting counsel from anyone. He does his own thing at his own time. Beloved, you will be highly favored and you will begin to do greater things. Yes, greater things. Paul, Sorry, David saw the potentials in him. He saw the potentials. He identified the potentials that God has given him. So he never allowed anything to weigh him down. Don't allow anything to weigh you down. Look to God and move forward. You shall surely overcome. Beloved one, I encourage you wherever you are. To stand on your grounds. 
go on your knees. Pray unto God. Allow God to intervene in your life. You can't do it alone. You need the help of God. He is the only solution to every problem that you are going through. People will talk. People will say things. But all that they will say will not help you than that of God. God is the only solution to every problem. I encourage you to align yourself with God. And when you align yourself with God, He will allow people you to sing the song. They will sing your song to glorify Him. Hallelujah. They will sing your song to magnify Him. They will get to know that the hand of the Lord is with you. The God of Israel is with you. Stop despising yourself. Stop crying. Don't do any evil thing against yourself. Don't commit suicide. Wipe your tears. God is very close to you. He's ever ready to help you out. He's ever ready to lift you up. The only thing is that you need to repent. And turn your mind towards him. Love him. Love him. It takes time to work on you. It is you who have to surrender all to him. And as you surrender all to him, and you ask him to take perfect control, he will do this for you. And everything will work perfectly for his glory. And you shall surely be lifted up. And people will say, is this not a thing that we do, we do away? But how come that this thing has become so great? And people will testify about how God has helped you. God bless you, bless you, beloved one. God be with you, beloved one. It is my prayer that you align yourself with God and begin to serve Him. Begin to love Him. Begin to humble yourself before Him. And He will help you and see you through in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let us begin to pray and thank God for this beautiful day. As you have heard this word, if you will be ready and you want God to allow people to sing songs that are good songs about you, then you need to align yourself with God. Say this after me. Dear Lord God, I know I have offended you in many ways. Ignoring you and doing things my own way. Forgive me. I also forgive myself. And I search for your favor in my life. In Jesus' name. Open your mouth and pray with me. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this very moment, O oh Lord. And we magnify you for your greatness in our life. We thank you, my Lord, for everything that you have been doing. We thank you, my Lord, for your divine presence. We thank you, my Lord, for calling us, O oh God, unto yourself once again. We humble ourselves before you. Dear Lord God, we ask for your help, O oh God, be merciful unto us. Father, for we have been stubborn. We have been, my Lord, disobedient to you in so many areas. Forgive us, O oh God, of our unrighteousness. Lord, in the name of Jesus, we come before you in all humility. And we ask, O oh God, for your divine intervention in our daily living. In Jesus' mighty name, we thank you because you are faithful to have mercy on us and to receive us graciously. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Beloved one, our prayer point number two. Will you say this after me? Father, in the name of Jesus, I align with you. Grant me victory over my enemies. Help me this day to get connected to you in Jesus' name. Open the mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we acknowledge you this day as the only true God who can help us in life. Father, we pray thee, help us, O God, 
to get our spirit connected to you, to get our soul connected to you, to preeminence control over our life and use us more than ever before. Father, in the name of Jesus, be merciful unto us. We are unworthy, but still there. Be merciful unto us. Father, and receive us graciously as you grant us, O God, victory over our enemies. In the name of Jesus, we have eyes we cannot see. We have ears we can't hear. We have mouth we cannot speak. So the devil has taken up a hand. But this day, we acknowledge you as the only God who can help us in this life. We thank you because, my Lord, with you all things are possible. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Beloved one, our prayer point number three. Say this after me. Most holy one of Israel, please be merciful to me and let me have your favor. Let your favor locate me. The greatest favor in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray thee, O Lord, and we ask this. You highly favored David. You highly favored Mary. You highly favored great men and women who feared you and who humbled themselves before you and who had pure heart before you. We ask them, O Lord, cleanse us, O Lord, and make us pure as you want, and use us for your glory, and let your highly favor come upon us. We know you have favored everyone in this land of the, of the living, but we need your highly favor to help us do great and mighty things Hallelujah. for your glory in the name of Jesus. We know you can do this for us. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Beloved one, our last prayer before you thank God, say this after me. I know it is possible with me and it is possible with you and I am more than a conqueror to defeat my enemies in Jesus name Father I thank you open your mouth and pray right now that you are more than a conqueror yes it is possible you can conquer it is possible you can conquer. Just keep this word in your mind and in your heart that you can conquer your enemies no matter how great and how tall, how gigantic they are. You are more than a conqueror. Nothing can conquer you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we ask of God for this favor that be merciful unto us. We know you in us. It is possible to conquer our enemies. You with us. As we align with you, we'll fear no evil. For thou art with us, and you have said in your word that you will not forsake us, nor leave us, Lord. So we ask of God, let your spirit be great in us. Let your power be great in us. Manifest yourself, O God, wherever we find ourselves. And use us mightily to defeat our enemies. Let fear grip our enemies. Let fear fall on our enemies as the Philistines ran away out of the sight of the Israelites after the death of Goliath. So let our enemies be, my Lord, under our feet. Let them flee out of our sight. In the name of Jesus, we know it is possible to conquer. It is possible to defeat our enemies. 
in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, my Lord, for this which you have granted unto us in the name of Jesus. And from this day we shall be on fire for you and for your glory. We will not sit down for the devil to threaten us. We will not sit down for the devil to defeat us. We will not allow fear to hold on to our life. We will not allow discouragement to hold on to our life. We shall overcome. For you have said, we shall be the head and not the tail. We shall be on top and never beneath. Let this work come to pass in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, Father, for answering our prayer in Jesus' name. Beloved, I want you to begin to thank God because he is a God that answers prayer and he has helped you and is going to do accordingly as we have asked. Remember to keep this in mind and continue praying. Humble yourself before him and fear him in everything that you are going to do. Ask yourself whether it is good in the sight of the Lord to do it. If he says no, you don't do it. If he says yes, you do it. Open your mouth and thank God for his favor, a measurable favor bestowed upon your life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We give you all the glory and adoration. And we magnify you for your greatness. We know the Father, whatever you have said concerns us will surely come to pass. And we shall overcome and defeat our enemies. We thank you, my Lord, for whatever you have done for us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Let me pray with you, beloved one. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for this day, O oh Lord. As your children, your servants, Father, we come before you with our supplications. Humbly, my Lord, we ask the Father, you bestow upon us, O oh God, your unmeasurable favor. Let it be our portion this day. Grant us the spirit of boldness to stand. Sometimes some things hold us back that we cannot, O oh Lord, move ahead. But from this day onward, let your spirit, O oh God, move us. Nothing, O oh God, will move us apart from your word. Whatever your word tells us, that is what we are going to do. So let your grace abound towards us. Let your favor be great upon our lives. Let, O oh God, every spirit that is contrary to your spirit, as soon as they see us and hear the sound of our voice, let them bow. We decree this in the name of Jesus. We speak to the heavens. Let the heavens hear the sound of our voice as we speak. And we speak to the earth that they should obey the words of our mouth. That whatsoever thing that proceeds out of our mouth should succumb unto us and do accordingly in the mighty name of Jesus. We thank you, my Lord, for your supernatural power. We thank you for the unction. And we thank you for the thing that you are doing in our life this day. In the mighty name of Jesus, thank you, Holy One of Israel. May your name alone be exalted. May your name alone be praised. May your name alone be preached all over the world. We thank you for your greatness. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. And let us sing, shout a big amen. Yeah. Amen. Beloved one. I foresee the finger of God touching somebody's life, bringing change in your life. There's a great transformation happening in somebody's life. Even somebody is receiving healing. As you listen to me and you start praying, there is a spirit moving out of your life and your whole being is changed for good. Your life is changed for good. I can see the Holy Spirit touching somebody, lifting you from the ground and 
removing the dust off your garment, shaking the dust out of your garment. And I could see the Holy Spirit doing a new thing in your life. And your life is never ever going to be the same. God be with you, beloved one. Let the Spirit of the Lord direct you and move you and use you accordingly that they must sing a good song about you in the name of Jesus. Just humble yourself. Have your pure, a pure heart and fear God and commune with God. Every now and then, nothing stopping you. Don't let your computer stop you. Don't let your phone distract you. Don't let friends distract you. Don't let your, fr your parents distract you. Don't let anything that you see with your naked eyes distract you. Be focused. Concentrate. Have a good relationship with God. And God will do mighty works in your life. You shall be called the one that the Lord God has blessed. God bless you. God be with you. Beloved one, wherever you are, if you like this video, just share it. Like it. And subscribe. And God will richly bless you so much. Same time next week, we'll come your way and share the word and pray with you and see what God will do for you. Hallelujah. We love you, beloved one, wherever you are. Peace. Shalom. Amen and amen.